Welcome to Critical Hit of Major Spoilers Podcast. Thank you so much for downloading and checking us out again this week. Oh my goodness, Rodrigo. Had some some rough times. Yeah. Yeah, but you guys episode. made it. I mean, yes. <laughs> and no. After a bit of a delay. A little bit of a delay. But hey, we're back. On Critical Hit. <laughs> I think we're inside of uh, the Pharaoh Fort. It's a, yeah, a place where forest. it's where all your uh, magnets go crazy. Clearly, dwarves don't spend a lot of time fretting about what to name their cities, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. I wonder what nanny man's means. Well, what does it mean? What did you guys find in nanny man's? Nothing. <laughs> now we talked about there being something there. Is it where they kept the children? <laughs> uh, it's where they kept something. Oh, is it? Oh, goats. Mm-hmm. That's because yeah, they have those nan- big old goats. Nanny, nanny goats. That makes sense. Uh, uh, so this might be where they keep pigs. What? <laughs> there are always a Why? bunch of pigs. Is it? Yeah. Okay. Oh, just just by association, because that the last one was a goat place. It has to be a pig place. It's just a pharaoh is the name for a litter of pigs. Um, yeah, I guess that's true. But that again, not yeah, that's a different pharaoh. But oh. <laughs> how, how is this one spelled? Uh, F E R R O. Oh, right. All right. Well, then I this, got nothing. This is actually the term for more than one ferret. One ferret, two pharaoh, a herd of pharaohinas. Yeah, that's that's it. At the very least, that's an evolutionary line. Yes. Yeah. That's that's how it works in Pokemon: gold, silver, red, white, and blue. That's that's gonna be the uh, in Sword and Shield now. Yep. Yep. Anyway, Dungeons and Dragons, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess for it. you guys uh, do make it to the uh, to a heavily forested fort. Is there a specific place within the city that we're expected to go, or are we kind of on our own once we're here? Uh, I mean, you guys have been flying blind pretty much since you left um, mm-hmm. Bumble Hearth. You know, they're, they they know that some or or they extrapolate that another force of dwarves is bunkered down somewhere around here because as reinforcements come in and even as troops that are like trying to get into bumble hearth like keep getting pulled away uh to you know again by their calculations has to be this area Mm-hmm. Okay. But there, there wasn't like you know, meet at the Piggly Wiggly, bark like a dog four times. No, there was a secret not. room. Okay. Well, I mean, maybe there's a certain dwarf that needs to uh, do some beating on the ground and send out some <laughs> some yeah. Morse code trimmers or whatever those things were. Or maybe there's Just... a certain warden that wants to like I don't know, make friends with a forest spirit and find out what's what. Why can't it be? That both? makes too much sense. <laughs> Yeah, why not both? I, why why not the magic guy? Since uh, some some arcane energies where they might be throwing up some uh, barriers from ghosts. Yeah. Yeah, I, I have no, I do nothing in this team except fail. So I'm just gonna stand here and oh! draw my foot in the in the dust, making circles and, and odd shapes. Okay. Why does well, often time in the symbol least, of Bohemet? Who's at least dead. you finally at least you finally got that crate off of it. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> You should keep watch from a tree in case more ghosts approach. I ballet up the side of a tree. So what's the plan here? We use our various talents to try to figure out what's going on. Yep. Uh, yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. So uh, who wants to go first? Well, none of our qualified instructors are here, so I got just a few minutes. I'm going to roll nature. I'm going and to what attempt are you, And to... what are you trying to do? I'm attempting... To communicate with some sort of spirit of the area. This is something I have not done since my big schmagegi. Mm-hmm. So I'm a little leery of it, but I'm going to attempt to commune with maybe the spirits of a tree or some stones or something that won't trigger me into a giant flying blood and rage beast. Okay. Well, try not to botch it then. <laughs> ha ha! That's, oh, that's an 18 good. plus 21, 39. That don't suck. I had to concentrate right. a lot harder than usual. Yep. Sakar is concentrating hard, 
and trying to keep it cool at the same time. And, uh, you know, it's kind of like in a very tactile way, working his way through the, the trees that have, uh, that are growing out of the, the inside of the fort. Uh, as he does so, he can tell a few things. One, uh, like I said before, these trees are recent. Two, uh, these trees very clearly originate from just just in the way that they're that they grow and that they're planted it's clear that the origin of this forest is out, outside of this fort so essentially if if normal things had happened then these trees would have grown from trees that were closer to the center of the forest and then from there closer and then from there closer that presumably still happened just much faster than normal um, and then lastly, as he does so, he stumbles across a uh, helmet, an obs- a helmet with an obsidian shard. I'm going to grab it. It has a very handsome divot in it. Hmm. Hmm. Does the obsidian seem to be, I mean, granted it's a shard, but does it seem to be the same size of shard? So it was mounted that size, mm-hmm. but the the helmet has been bashed in. Yes. Hmm. Can I tell anything about the stone? Uh, the stone appears to be a mundane piece of obsidian. Really? Hmm. hmm. What about the steel? Uh, the steel appears to have been treated in some way. Uh, there might be something magical about it. Might be worth showing to Dalin. Yeah. Uh, it could also be somewhat structural, like the magic might involve the, the the helmet maintaining its integrity. So the fact that it's been bashed in might dissipate it. Um, mm. You also spot a uh, like a full set of like ghost armor farther into the forest that is kind of similarly bashed. Does it seem to be missing a helmet? Uh, no, this one has its helmet. Huh. I think I will show the helmet to Dolan. Presuming that this is all, you know, taking place in a time frame where someone else hasn't already acted. Uh, sure. Um, what What is Dalin doing? Um, mostly waiting for Sakar to do his thing. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> well, Sakar, Sakar comes over to you. He's holding a helmet. I say I might have been looking for like magical wards. Okay. But Are you looking you, for magic? You might. You might have been. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, I haven't seen Sakar uh, right. do the whole talk to spirits thing that okay. effectively before. From high up okay. atop the wall, you just see Seven Owls Wise just shaking his head. <laughs> um, he so yeah, in that case, if Dalin was like, well, maybe I'll start looking for wards or something, you know, he sees Sakar come back. It didn't take him very long to come back. Found one so, of the helmets? I did. Sakar conveys the information that Rodrigo just conveyed to all of us. In a manner that is very Sakar like and in no way sounding like me repeating what Rodrigo said. And I lightly toss the helmet to Dalin. Well, that's evidence that someone's killing these soldiers um, or re killing. I don't know. Maybe if we uh, mm. follow the trail of broken armor, we can find where it goes. Possibly. There's oh. at least one more set of armor out there. Like, but... how smashed is the armor? Like, with something big? Or with uh, yeah, it's pretty weapon. big, like mm-hmm. like troll you know, size, it, big, or uh, Ododon I mean, big. It, that's hard to tell. Well, okay, so uh, how, what what do you what do you imagine? Because like this thing was hit in such a way that a good chunk of the helmet was caved in, but you can take like you can take that helmet and be like like hold it up to a log and be like, yep, this is about the size, or hold it up to like. Uh, Albrecht's mm-hmm. hammer and be like, "Yep," you know, it's like <laughs> something. Basically, this was bashed in by something big and heavy, which you know could have been uh, a big enough hammer or a big enough rock from a trebuchet or you know whatever, like debris. A fist of a god. Yes. D and DSI is a very very new science. You know, so. it's like depending on the structure or like how strong the actual helmet is. Seven Owls Wise may be able to like leave a similar impression just from punching it. Ah, okay. But from so, way up high, I don't see like a giant impression where something smashed down and it only clipped the corner of that helmet to smash it uh, to the state that it's in, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You would imagine that something 
maybe no more than you know a couple feet in diameter okay. hit this hit All this right. thing right. like anywhere anywhere from like 10 inches to two to, to like a couple feet okay wide so you know like a log or a hammer or something can i make like a i guess a perception check to like look around it and look for like signs of tracks or other like I don't know, splintered trees get a better idea of like what might have made this. Uh, sure. That's a thirty-seven. You don't you don't see a point of egress ingress? I don't know. Uh but you are pretty sure that this fort has been breached somewhere. Like mm. uh, essentially these helmets and stuff come from the you found these on the inside. So um clearly ghosts have been coming through the fort to this uh, part of the wall. Uh, well, the ghosts have gotten in here, clearly. Uh, but something keeps keeping them from uh, coming back out. So that's probably a good sign. Someone's keeping them from coming back out? Well, you know, someone's... Like something's hurting them. Yeah, exactly. That's what I meant. I mean, I Can don't I... know. Some of them might escape, but... I would like to actually do some Arcana on the helmet if I could. Okay. Ha ha! Nat 20. For 46. Uh, yeah, you you would imagine that these helmets are enchanted to take on the properties of the ghosts using them. So if the ghosts want to like go through a wall, the armor will come with them. Uh, this one is too busted up, though. But you can still figure it out for the remnants. Figure out how the armor works. Oh? It matches itself to the properties that the ghost is currently exhibiting. What are, so uh, if the ghost is relatively solid, trying to hit someone, it'll take an impact. If the ghost is wanting to walk through a wall, it'll walk through the wall. This one won't work. It's too damaged. Think your ghost friend would be interested in a set of armor? Ha! Huh. That's actually a really good point. I bet he would be. Hmm. If we find one that functions. <laughs> I can take a look at some of the others. Ghosts are getting in, so there's nothing warding them. I'm going to see if I can locate... I'm actually going to try to locate wards now. Uh, see if I can recognize any magic that is similar to what they were using at Bumblehearth. Okay. That's a 37. No wards. I don't think so. Do we expect that the damage is what disturbed whatever enchantment was on the helmet? Presumably. Uh, yeah, uh, Dalin can, can tell that, yes, it this helmet is busted because something hit it really hard. So it is possible to bust the helmet and theoretically dispel the ghost? Well, no, mm -hmm. it just would dispel the enchantment on the helmet. The ghost would still yeah. be there. It would just probably disable the armor, but that's about the same as, you know, sundering any suit of armor, which is tricky, and you're probably better just hurting the thing wearing it. Yeah, it's, it's less that the... Uh, armor is holding the ghost in place and more that the armor is enchanted to work with the ghost's natural mm. unnatural spiritual processes nothing more natural than a ghost that's not true at all <laughs> and i don't even know that much about ghosts it depends on your definition of natural i guess so but maybe we should go you said that you saw another one another armor yes let's take a look Maybe we can find a trail. Sakar shall lead them into the jungle. Okay. Uh, you guys move past the tree line, and uh, sure enough, there's a busted up, pretty much complete set of uh, ghost armor. <laughs> I'm going to inspect it to see if it'll function. Okay. <laughs> Do I need to Arcana? Presumably, yes. But uh, as soon as uh, Dalin uh, starts walking around it, to inspect it basically he kind of falls flat on his belly and gets pulled uh, by his foot uh, into the forest oh boy that <laughs> uh, tracks i jump down from the trees okay uh, i jump into the trees and start trying to <laughs> i was gonna say how many of us saw this follow him. uh you all saw it uh, okay after him we, we follow chase. can we tell yes. what grabbed okay. him it looked like something pulled him in by, like, one of his feet. Well, we didn't see what. Sakara shall leap all nimbly bimbly. Okay. Do we have our action points back? Uh, you yep. guys 
uh, have not had a full rest. Oh, boy. Okay. So this would be one, two, three. So you've hit. So you haven't hit another milestone yet. We have not. Yeah. Yep. Wow. Uh, go ahead and roll initiative. Uh, 30. Uh, Albrecht. 36. Dalin. 27. Uh, a little sparkle. 31. And Sakar. 22. Dalin gets pulled into the forest. You guys run in after, after him. Um, and uh, as Albrecht uh, runs in, uh, he sees um, essentially this big, giant log that is studded with a bunch of smaller logs hanging from a rope come straight at him. Ah! Athletics to dodge out of the way of the traps. Sure. Keep running. All right. Yep. I'll do that. And 39. Uh, 39 is a success. Excellent. I duck and roll and yep. barely break and my it, stride. Yep. Swings past them. Um, Leap over pit traps and whatever. Yep. Uh, speaking of which, uh, pit trap springs up. Ah. In time for me to deal, do something about it? Yep. All right. So you just sailed acrobatics? Uh, yes, he just did athletics. Oh, oh, athletics. Athletics, sorry, Perfect. yes. So now I'll do acrobatics, because um, Little Sparkle is familiar with all sorts of traps, so she will try to uh, tumble out of the way of um, the pit trap while, you know, letting out a shout to warn those behind her about it. Uh, 32. Uh, 32 is not going to succeed. All right, I will reroll with always a natural. Okay. Uh, which is a 41. That'll do it. Sweet. And that'll take us to seven hours wise. Well, I don't think um, I can use acrobatics now. Correct. Uh, uh, yeah, I, but basically a big old pit has opened in front of you as well. I can't stealth around this pit. Well, I'm still running from the trees. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to see what can I do. I can't heal anybody. Seeing the direction that Dolan was pulled in mm -hmm. and knowing that this is pretty bad. What if I just say a prayer? Oh, Lord, please help us now. We need a, we need a, a good roll here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Dear Lord, please don't let this doofus atheist Please croak. don't let this Dolan be eaten by whatever that was that dragged to drug him into the forest. It, well, see, um, there is an issue with uh, who you are normally dead. dead. Well, any entities, any deities, <laughs> whoever Dolan worships, shine down upon that little. That His god guy. is evil. Wait, no, never mind. His god, who knows what he lived? Well, worships. if that's the case, say, then who the, has the crystal? Only thing I can do, yeah, right? <laughs> only thing I can do then is do a nature and try to uh, see that path and try to um, intercept that path that he was that he was uh, drugged down uh, and from from my position. Now you can do that with perception. Okay, I can do that with perception too. Both the same uh, crappy. Uh, uh, score, but I get a thirty-one, and I have no, okay. I have no uh, rerolls. So there you go. So uh, as uh, Seven Owls Wise is uh, running through uh, on the tops of the trees, trying to keep an eye out for uh, Dalin, he steps on a branch, and it's uh, clearly some sort of uh, pressure plate, and basically a you know, you guys know kind of like what a, like a foot trap, like a bear trap. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it just kind of springs up and mauls him, mm. uh, getting him stuck on top of the tree. Ouch. Uh, so that's going to take us to Dallin, who essentially the, you're like, hey, there's something around your foot that's pulling you into the forest. It basically whips you over this like uh, sapling and uh, kind of lands you in a maybe four foot deep uh, like little pond and essentially just puts you in head first. So you're kind of underwater and tied up or, or your foot is tied. Am I able to discern the shore ish of the pond? Uh, your head's yeah. kind of underwater. You'd have to like, I mean, yeah, you can probably see it. Okay. Uh, I'm going to teleport there. <laughs> okay. It's what Dolan do. Okay. 35? Okay. Uh, that's going to fail, yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, no action point. 
Action point? Okay. Yeah. 41. Okay. Uh, yep. Uh, Dallin teleports, uh, does that thing that Eladrin do sometimes, where he, like, teleports kind of up in the air, and as he's landing, he kind of seems to kind of, like, waft sideways and avoid another uh, noose, essentially, that he was about to step into. That's going to take us to uh, Sakar, who has another one of those uh, big logs on uh, on spikes coming at him, or spikes on logs, I guess. Spikes on logs. How long? How big of a log are we talking? Log size. Maybe like a, yeah, like ten feet long, uh, maybe like four feet wide, kind of a thing. Would it be ridiculous to try and catch it? No. It would be awesome if you succeed and hilarious if you don't, so I'll allow it. <laughs> <laughs> would that Sweet. be athletics? Yeah, that would be athletics. All right. So, Sakar is going to do probably one of the dumbest things I've done since I was an orc and try and catch the log. Okay. 39. Uh, 39 is a success. That, oh. that may actually be the dumbest thing you've done since you've been an orc. Yeah. It's right up there, and it was just one of those moments where nothing else to do. No time to move. Only time to talk about it. Ugh! You know. Yeah. Agree. Uh, so, yeah. Sakar catches it. Uh, no one needs to know how much that hurt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's going to take us to the uh, top of the round. Albrecht can see uh, in the distance that... Uh, Dalin is uh, standing over there looking at the ground. What you looking at there? There's a trap here. I think there's a trap there and a trap there. Oh, and the one that got me. But that's in the middle of the pond now, so. Can I do a perception to try to find a safe path through this stuff now that we're not hurriedly rushing to Dalin? Sure. All right, I will try that. Thirty-three. Mm, uh, thirty-three is not gonna do it. Mm. I don't have any rerolls, so it's a very middling roll. Yep. So uh, Albrecht uh, holds up, like holds out his hands, and starts kind of walking through and checking for uh, traps. In the process, he uh, walks by a tree and. Something uh, scratches him as he walks by. Uh, At first, he thinks that it's probably just a branch, but then when he starts feeling intensely woozy, uh, realizes that there was, in fact, just like a big old shard of something with some goop on it uh, that he just scratched himself on. does not Uh, feel good in his body. The tree bit me. Uh, It'll take us to Little Sparkle. Uh, well, since this is uh, just filled with traps, I'm going to try to do like a kind of speed run of uh, disabling some of the ones that I can find or possibly either shouting out uh, advice to the team on what sort of traps they might find to uh, maybe make a thievery check to help us get through this mess. Okay. 42. Uh, 42 is a success. Uh, you guys, uh, hear some good advice coming up from over there from a little sparkle. Uh, it's going to take us to seven hours wise. Uh, I scream back and there's also traps up in the trees as I pull <laughs> the uh, trap off me. And then I have to heal myself to uh, stop the bleeding from uh, what may be a pretty mangled leg. Uh, yeah. 43. Uh, yeah. You definitely uh, staunch the bleeding. Still kind of, kind of messed up. Yeah, I'll I'll make my way down the tree looking and keeping an eye out for other traps. Okay. Uh, it's going to take us to Dalin. <laughs> <laughs> so we're in more forest than city right now, right? Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, you guys are well in the forest. I don't have anything that ups any of my skills reasonably, do I? I don't remember. Does Brian have anything that can help boost any of your skills? I did not. No, I have I have a utility power that gives me a bonus to insight and perception checks, but that gets my insight and perception up to 15s. Oh. Yeah, it's not the best. Would I be able to use 
nature to discern what is and is not a trap? I'll allow it. Cool. I mean, a lot of the the traps here are camouflaged by looking natural, so sure. Yeah, and that's a failure. Okay. Oh, no. Five. oh no. All right. Can I action point. Yeah, I did that the first time. Ugh. Rough night for us. Uh, you guys, you guys pretty much spanked the uh, <laughs> the one middle in the one? middle there. Yeah. yeah. Dalin tries his best to identify what is a natural feature and what is a trap, and so uh, gets to kind of have this like terrible slow motion moment of uh, realization as uh, Seven Owls uh, jumps down from his tree. And the ground that he lands on in collapses as uh, Sakar runs uh, or, or puts down the tree that he had caught and sort of like starts to run towards him. And another one just hits him uh, on the opposite side. Um, you know, obviously, Albrecht uh, falls over pretty woozy and uh, Little Sparkle gets uh, her foot caught in something and... Uh, uh, right about that time, uh, Dalin turns around and something just clobbers him right in the head. The plants don't move enough for me to identify them as well here. <laughs> yeah, they won't talk back to you, so... Yeah. Mm, mm, mm. Rude. It's like, what are you? It's like, oh, thanks for asking. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> at least at least they, don't, they won't lie to you like the ones mm. in the Feywild. It's like, are you sure you're a chrysanthemum? Yes. I'm not certainly not a tiger rose. I'm not going to bite you. Yeah, you're all dead. Roll up new characters. Yeah. Uh, too bad you all died before you got your epic level thing that lets you just get right back up. Oh. Actually, I <laughs> one, do have that thing. One say, level away. A couple away. of us should have that thing. Oh, yeah. Well, there you go. Uh, two of you can come back as ghosts. Hooray! <laughs> I get some cool armor. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> Albrick wakes up. <laughs> Just because I love it when Brian does that. <laughs> uh, but but also because it makes sense because he's actually pretty tough and uh, poison wouldn't keep him down for very long. Historically speaking, it's time to cart your, count your limbs, dude. <laughs> yes. uh, all your limbs do appear to be there, uh, tied tight against your body. <laughs> you are also uh, very snugly tied up and uh, hanging upside down from the ceiling. Uh, looking around, do I see anyone? Uh, yes. You see a uh, little sparkle also tied up in a similar manner uh, next to you. <laughs> Am I, I conscious? Nope. Ew. Can I sway and like try to bump her awake? Uh, yeah. Sparkle. <laughs> uh, so you are it. bumped awake and I see I'm dangling from a ceiling yep alright I turn into a rat <laughs> okay fair enough uh, you uh, fall a good distance onto the ground mm. uh, am I still like conscious you okay down yeah. there cool she like looks up and like gives a little chirp noise <laughs> yeah. that I'm going to start trying to either chew through or untie or find a way to get down the rest of the party. Okay. Well, the rest of the party isn't in the room. Oh, it's just us. Yep. Interesting. What kind of room are we in? Well, it's not really so much a room as it is a collection of gnarly, uh, bent up trees. Oh, um, and it is, in fact, very, very wide and spacious. This is like a like ballroom sized room. And you guys uh, were kind of hanging from the wall from some uh, hooks. I'm going to try to get him down. OK. Uh, you start uh, chewing on his ropes, at mm -hmm. which point uh, you hear a noise coming from uh, a hallway down that way. I will hide. Okay. And then a truly massive, gross, gnarly troll mm. uh, walks into yeah. the room, looks at Albrecht, and says, 
You awake? Uh, yeah. He uh, picks him up by the rope and just like flings him up and swats him against the ground. Ah! Super knocking him out and then just uh, looks around. And like, wasn't there another one in here? And he like drags Albrecht off. I will try to stealthily follow. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's not hard. He's not looking for a rat. Uh, he leads you into a larger room where uh, there's a big roaring fire with a big old pot at the center. Um, oh and you you spot the rest of your compatriots, at least uh, what you expect to be the rest of your compatriots, as you see uh, Seven Owls and Sakar also tied up and hanging from hooks. Uh, and then you uh, spot a, a sack uh, that presumably has Dalin inside. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's great. Does it look like they're pre- like preparing to cook these guys? Oh, yeah. Oh, sweet, sweet, sweet. That's a problem. He uh, hangs up uh, Albrecht from a hook and uh, reaches into basically some large kind of uh, barrels that he has. Uh, and like pulls out some, like just gets some powder in his hands, <laughs> like his big giant gnarly hands, and starts pouring it, like kind of like sprinkling into his uh, his cauldron. Takes a big giant spoon and like stirs it a little bit, and goes like, cool. And then uh-huh. like kind of kind of looks around, like where'd that other one go? And uh, walks. Walks back out of the room. All right. Well, as soon as he walks out, I'm going to give it like a quick beat just to give him a little distance and then start trying to uh, going back to freeing people. Okay. Who are you freeing? I will try to free Albrecht first. Okay. You start uh, chewing his rope. Mm-hmm. You start hearing him coming back. I hide again. Okay. Comes back, scratches his head, shrugs, gets back to cooking. He actually grabs another barrel uh, and starts, he pours in like different stuff into that one, like stirs it around a little bit, and then um, reaches for um, presumably the sack that Dalin's in um, and just kind of like starts dipping the sack into the barrel like <laughs> at least he takes his marinade seriously yeah and i mean completely like you know he's like all the way inside oh boy uh, i mean if it seems like there's gonna be a risk of dalin drowning in sauce i will act and try to stab this guy if not i'm gonna try to keep running the stealth play oh yeah i mean he's you know he's like, you can hear Dalin starting, like, gurgling from in there. Oh. Boo. Okay. Then I'm going to basically sneak up behind this guy and transform back and attack him. Okay. You uh, transform back and stab. Like, you are pretty sure. Sh- I mean, this guy's huge, so his kidneys have to be massive, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and just get him right in there. And, uh, y- like, y- you see, like, his skin, like... Uh, like, uh, like goose pimple up when you do that, and like his muscles like contract, um, and he just slowly turns to look at you, and he's got these like giant glowing eyes and his like disgusting sausage nose. Uh-oh. Like, oh, there you, oh, there you are, and he just uh-huh. you know giant hand coming at you. <laughs> I will try running and ducking out of the way of said giant hand. Yeah, uh, you can, like, get in between some, like, roots to where he can't immediately get you. All right, then from there, she'll be like, I don't suppose we can make an arrangement where you don't eat my friends and we help you deal with the ghosts. He scratches his chin. Uh, I can deal with the ghosts, he says, hanging Dallin back up. You can hear him coughing from inside the the sack. <laughs> okay. Uh well, we can maybe 
you've got to be running low on food, hence why you grabbed all our people. Uh, how about we get you food and then you don't eat my friends? Mm. We also have booze. Mm. How much booze? She'll, like, from where she's at, uh, it's like, well, we were expecting dwarves and not trolls, so I don't know how long this will last, but she'll, like, roll the uh, little jug of mead towards him. It, like, but there's more where this came up. from. And again, this this guy's colossal. Uh, possibly D&D colossal. <laughs> yeah, uh, he literally doesn't fit in these rooms. He's just, like... Basically, he can walk at a squat without any problems. Like he's just, you know, his butt is like, uh, like six inches from the ground, and he's just kind of Yikes. like walking around all like. It doesn't seem to bother him. Uh, but yeah, he takes the the tankard, which is like tight, like he's like holding it like a thimble, mm-hmm. and he like, like you know, turns it and like click uh, click click, and just like sits there thinking for a second. Yeah, that's pretty good. Fine, dwarven mead. We mm. came here hoping to make an alliance with the dwarves that lived here to uh, assault the city, uh, but I'm sure that they would be happy to arrange a mutual mead for attacking ghosts deal. I don't think they would be. Well, I'd be happy to adjudicate it on your behalf. Dwarves hate trolls. Trolls hate dwarves. Yeah, but I'm guessing in this case, dwarves and trolls hate the ghosts more. Mm. Mm. He, like, goes over to Albrecht and, like, flicks him. Bam. Hey, dwarf. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, oh, look, a troll. Yeah. You hate ghosts more or trolls more? <sighs> See? Yeah. He's just uh, waking up from unconsciousness and definitely hates trolls or t- t- ghosts, not t- ghosts more than trolls. And <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, mean, I guess I got more personal history with ghosts. See, see? Nah. I, very good judge of character. I <laughs> do not think he hates ghosts more. Dwarves hate trolls. Trolls hate dwarves. <laughs> okay. He starts looking for like a pokey thing or like a long sort of tool type of thing. Uh, well, maybe we can come to some form of truce in that there's a lot of extra space now because a lot of the dwarves got killed and turned into ghosts. And maybe... You and other trolls could have part of the island, and the dwarves wouldn't bother you, and you wouldn't bother dwarves. No other trolls. Dwarves kill them all. Oh, well, that's very sad. Uh, what's your What's your name? He uh, finds something that looks like an oversized fireplace poker, and he says, uh, "It's Dwali," well, and he uh... and he starts like just. Fiercely poking at, like, the area where Little Sparkle is in. Ah! <laughs> is there a way for me to, like, get from there to another area that is not being stabbed? Okay. Yeah, you can... Uh, basically, he doesn't have a good angle on you, so you can more or less stay there. Sure. All right, um, I'll, like, try, try to basically back, do a little... Yeah, you can essentially, like, it's it's like a route that's... Uh, coming up from a tree that's like a little bit up mm-hmm. off the ground so you can essentially like grab onto like the ceiling of the little chamber that you've gotten yourself into and like pull yourself up and he can't he can't hook it all the way up to get you mm. yet great great he so, like tosses it aside well i'm i'm not a dwarf he he starts he like makes a little like hook with his finger like, you know, like when you walk into a room and you want the scissors, you're like doing like little scissors with your yeah, yeah. With your hand. Like, yeah, he's like doing that. He's like just kind of like looking around through his stuff. Uh, everybody else can wake up now. Wake them around. What's going on? <clears throat> What's going on? Uh, there's a giant troll in here. Oh, so, you're a big one, aren't me, you? Me and Dwali are having a nice chat about not eating you. 
I think that's a good chat. Hello, Dwali. I'm seven hours wise. Please don't eat me. He gets really close to him. This one already marinated. Um, yeah. Yes, maybe. Yeah, he's he's pretty well pickled. I assure you I'm most unappetizing. Also, why do you want to eat us? Guys, what's going on? We've been captured by a troll. Oh. This is Dwali. Dwali, my friends. Not why food. am I itchy and dark? Oh, yeah, you got dipped in sauce. Mm -hmm. damp. Looking forward to this one. Haven't eaten an Eladrin in a long time. Mm -hmm. I would rather you didn't. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, so what happened to the dwarves that used to live here? What's with this giant forest? Oh, I grew it. Oh, that's impressive. Yeah, I'm very powerful. Uh, what you say, uh, what is common word? Uh, wild person. Oh, well, Sakaar is also a, a, a wild person. Perhaps you guys have some uh, common ground. Oh, yeah? Mm. I don't think so. You, you like fight surprised. with two weapons, little man? I do. You like running around the forest? I do. Oh, that is sad. I'm going to have to eat you. We do have things in common. <laughs> well, why do you have to eat him? Because I'm hungry. That's why we're trying to offer you a deal to get more food. Well, how are dwarves going to get me food? What are the ropes made of? You know, Rope. fibers. Yep. Do they, do they feel flammable? <laughs> uh, they could be. So what if I caught fire? I mean, you could. I think I should try. I'm going to catch fire. Okay. Uh, so car catches fire. Oh, uh, that's do dramatic. Yeah. Dwelly reaches for his rope and dips him in the pot. <laughs> it's a good thing that gives you fire resistance because that would have dealt a lot of it to you, a lot of fire damage to you as well. He like pulls him up and you know it's like Sakar's fire is magic, so he just like lights up again and so he like dips him again. <laughs> oh. What's Does wrong with this any one? Effect on the rope. Yeah, not fast enough. Especially since he'll just keep Keeps you underwater. Yeah. And now you're kind of drowning. Uh, uh, oh, so we want to attack the capital uh, to uh, deal with the dark pillar here. Um, but we need help. Uh, like I said, we were looking for other dwarves here. But I think you'd be a great helper too. And presumably since this place is all totally infested by ghosts they haven't eaten all the food that was in the capital and there were awesome stores of food there so maybe you could have a giant share of that mm, dwarves are hoarders he like pulls the car back up <coughs> what's wrong with you not enough you know, salt you know be on fire okay fine he like hangs him up again I gotta ruin my brine. I had like picks up his pot and like dumps it out on the side. Starts over. Starts like to gets a big barrel of water and pours it in. Starts like putting some spices into it. I'm just clear. You you clearly take cooking very seriously. And yeah, it's very it's seriously. Good. And so I'm just saying like. It, it would just be a shame to, to waste all this effort on, well, people who are going to taste disgusting because we are a gross lot. Oh. I haven't bathed in months. Well, that's good. Excuse you? <laughs> what? He, like, just glares at Don. Can't see it. <laughs> <sighs> all right, he's in a sack. Uh. Also, like, I was pretty sure that Seven Owls would not remember getting bathed by Don. Like Chicken said, I take very seriously. This one is main course. He points at the dwarf, big and meaty. <laughs> this one, aperitif. He points at uh, Seven Owls, already pickled. <laughs> points at Dolan. This one, just a little sprinkle here and there. Eldrin blood, too flowery. <laughs> Wait, what? 
Your seasoning. Are you happy now? <laughs> Not particularly. Yeah, I know. So, so listen, uh, we are here on a mission to take down that pillar that's causing you all sorts of problems on this island. I would imagine that uh, as soon as we deactivate that pillar, uh, things might go back to normal and you would have abundance of, of food. Uh, normal is a bunch of dwarves coming to kill me. Well, we could also make sure that there's abundance of food also. Enemy of my enemy is my friend. Well, how about we get you out of here? What do you mean? Well, if you... How do you, what do you think, how do you feel about spiders? <laughs> we are not taking him there. Definitely not. I mean, why not? And what... Oh. I bet they're delicious. Oh. Uh, this guy is not going to fit in your ship. Oh, boo. Okay. All right. He would if we, like, break him up into small pieces. What? <laughs> no, 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 no. We could liquefy him. Sakar, can he turn into anything gross? Yes. Maybe it'll help him lose his appetite. I don't got a lot of ideas here. Okay. Anything to put him to sleep? Any? Didn't you guys say something I'm just about saying, traps or we, something? We have it really um, a good in with the dwarven leaders of this place, and we can almost assuredly negotiate some deal with them and you, that you will be left alone, and we can even see if they can find more of your kind. I mean... I, I know a lot of the dwarves were or were trapping trolls in these stones, and I don't know that they were all killing them. Like maybe they could release some of them, and you could repopulate. Hmm. And then you wouldn't have to be alone anymore. I know I can't trust dwarves. Well, you can. I'm a uh, human. Who would you trust? Well, I no can't trust anybody. Not off on my own. Only can trust um, Jacob. Oh, who's Jacob? Jacob is, uh, how you say, a uh, creature friend. Oh, uh, an animal companion? Mm-hmm. Uh, is he around? Jacob outside. Oh. No can come inside. Is he just too big? He's very big. What kind of creature is he? Uh, he a goat. Oh, a very, very big goat? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Well, the dwarves have lots and lots of goats. Or at least they used to. They had a whole goat area. Yes, I think that's where Jacob come from. Oh. It's impressive that he got so big that he can't come in here. Oh, I feed him special diet. Oh, that makes him extra big? Mm-hmm. Huh. Big, powerful, diet? obeys my commands. Can move him as move action. <laughs> <laughs> Good to be a druid. <sighs> that must have been a, a weird translation from giant. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. And I assume Jacob talks to you? Mm -mm, Jacob, no talk. Oh, okay. But me, but uh, I understand Jacob. He looked like this, and he, like, makes a weird face. I know Jacob upset. Mm -hmm. Is Jacob he upset? He finds a hook and starts trying to, like, hook a little oh. sparkle out of there. <laughs> I'm still trying to squirm away. Yeah, you can squirm away. He, the, the hook's not quite long enough. Ah! <laughs> yeah, I'm more uh... trouble than I'm worth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Starting to think too much trouble. Uh oh. Uh, I hope that means you'll let me go and we can be friends. Maybe not treat you like food. Treat you like a rat. Uh, it's what would you? How would you treat a rat? I don't know. Leave poison out. Wait for you to eat it. <laughs> oh, lovely, lovely. You could, you could treat us like Jacob. Oh. No. You not can take it. You die, stomach explode. Mm. <laughs> you know, can eat special diet. What okay. is the special diet? Mm. Is it what made the forest grow? Oh, a little bit, yeah. But different. 
is for animal grow. Hmm. Oh. Do you have something Jacobs? that can make the animals grow small again? Uh, no. Only one way special diet. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to eat poison and die. And I don't want you to eat my friends. And I still think that we can work out something. Is there any way we can try prove to you that we are trustworthy? Hmm. I don't see how you can. Oh, I know. I trust you if I eat the dwarf. No. I only eat the dwarf. Rest of you can talk to the other dwarves. No, the other dwarves aren't going to trust you if you eat our dwarf. Oh, that makes sense. Mm, which one I eat then? Uh, I have an idea. Hmm? But you'll have to let me out of the bag so I can show you. No, I mean, I'll let Eladrin out of bag. He teleport away. <laughs> I promise I won't teleport. Mm, me not trust you, remember? He, like, flicks the bag a little bit. <laughs> it hurts a lot. No. It's okay. Than it looks. You teleport away. I eat dwarf. Sounds good to me. He lets Dalin out of the bag. I teleport in, away. In, in a, in a, <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I don't teleport away. <laughs> Saw it coming and it still got me. I mean, obviously. Uh. All, right, All right, so Dolan's out of the bag. Dolan's out of the bag. All right. Dolan's going to make a second copy of himself. Okay. Make a shadow Dolan. Yep. He let the five of us go and he stays here. Mm, to do what? You can eat him, right? The shadow nods. <laughs> oh. Mm, he's probably not going to be very filling like ghosts. That's fair. Well, back in the bag. <laughs> I'd rather not. <laughs> How about we give you the mead we brought as a token of good faith? And... <sighs> Do we? How are we on food in terms of like? Do we have enough to get more than enough to get back? Or, uh, yeah, you've got rations enough to to get back, but not enough extra. Oh no, 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 no! Okay. Like you guys are already pushing it because you lost so much time. Yeah. Um. Now, we're we're pretty far away from the uh place where the dwarves are, so we can't get back there without. Unless you know a easier way to get back to to Bumble Hearth, um, and there are lots we... of ways around the island. Oh, yeah! Well, Can you get us to the pillar? Mm. I mean, I can, but it's full of ghosts. I mean, you could fight them and eat them. I know, but why would I do that? Well, because we're trying ghosts, to ghosts no have no meat. I know. Yes. The benefit would be the ghosts would be gone, and we could get you meat. We could get you many Jacobs. I only need one Jacob. He's a very you, special boy. We can get many more for you to eat. <laughs> Me not eat Jacob. Well, we can get you. We can get you food other dips. and mead if you can let us get back to the uh, dwarves and negotiate a deal. Yeah, but why me not eat you now? That's a I short. Know. That's a short time okay, uh, satisfaction like, compared to a long term goal. Let's let's yeah, think this like out. It's like Jacob. Think about it. It's when you first met Jacob, you could have eaten him, but you didn't. You fed him the special food so that you'd grow him into your best friend. Hmm. So you're saying you like Jacob. Yes, exactly. If, except for that we can't eat the special food. But if you don't eat us and be nice to us, we can be your friend. And then we'll be much more helpful to you later. Hmm. Could be helpful later. You can talk to dwarves. Yes, we can talk to dwarves. Make them um, not try to kill Jacob yes, and me? I can. Hmm. Make him give me mead? Mm-hmm. Hmm. But me not eat any of you. Yes, that's the, that's the price. Mm-hmm. Go and help fight the ghosts. Yeah, take us to the pillar, fight the ghosts. Hmm. Well... Me think about it. 
Mm. I mean, if mm. we don't if we don't shut down the pillar, everything around here will cease to exist, and then there will be no Jacob and no you and no ghosts and no more food. I mean, not think things cease to exist. Pillar seems stable. Mm. Seems that way, but kind of deceiving those pillars. Mm. Eventually, though, the ghosts will kill the dwarves, and then you will run out of food. Hmm. And then they'll probably come and kill you. That would be a problem. I mean, they, ghosts do come and try to kill me and Jacob. Yeah. But when they're done killing all the dwarves who are distracting them for now, they'll be able to send more of them after you. Hmm. And Jacob. Yes. Too many ghosts, not enough meat, guys. Mm-hmm. Mm. Okay, me help you. <sighs> Thank you. But only eat one of you? No! no. Eat none of us! Okay, me not eat any of you. Mm. Mm. Well, you can eat this one. No, I mean, I want that one. Okay. All the Made of shadow. spooky shadows. You can have our mead. Uh, agreed, I agree with you. Spooky. Weird. Yeah. You're gonna you're gonna drink all that meat, aren't you? Oh yeah, me drink it all. Yeah. But there's more where it came from, seven. Yes. There's also a little more in that gourd there, buddy. As soon as we complete that this mission. He drinks the the rest of the meat you guys are carrying. Yeah, pretty good. Not hate. Now, yay. Oh, good, good, good. Now if you could maybe tell us a good way that we could get back to uh Bumble Hearth without uh, attracting ghosts, why, then we why, could get you more meat and meat even faster. Why Why would we... We need to go to the pillar. We need to coordinate the attack. Oh, right. They're mo- meeting us there with the assumption that we succeed. All right, let's go to the pillar. Go straight to pillar? Yeah. Mm, me not like that. Me want to talk to dwarven leaders. Negotiate deal. Okay. The dwarven leaders will be at the pillar. Yeah, then... Ghosts and spears will be also at the pillar. No time to talk. If me fight and then me not like the deal, what am I going to do? Well, that's, that's, eat some that's dwarves. Eat some dwarves. Mm. I can eat some dwarves now. Only one. No, you can eat a dwarf now. Oh, yeah. But please but, don't. But special eladrin sauce. <laughs> <laughs> I am right that that was the plan, though, that we're all meeting at the pillar. Or were we uh, supposed to go back to the report? Dwarves here in Barrel. Uh, the the plan was to make contact with the dwarves of Pharaoh Fort and then use mm-hmm. their base stone to... Oh, gotcha. All right, I forgot about the base stone. Hmm. Uh, right, okay. Well, there's a possible way here that we can communicate with the dwarves uh, at Bumble Hearth. And then you could talk to them and negotiate the deal before we go. Oh, yeah. That's Have what I th- say. <laughs> yes. Okay. Right. Uh, have you found the uh, the base stone? Mm, base stone. What is that? A uh, giant rock. Albrecht. Yes. Dwarves have many giant rocks. Do you know where the dwarves are in the city? No, all dwarves dead in the city. Half of them ghosts get. Half of them I get. Can Can you describe the base stone, Albrecht? Sure. Yes. Looks like this. <laughs> yes. So <laughs> oh, hey, big. Mm, couple buildings in in city that might have that. Two small doors for me to get inside. Hard to get dwarves. Okay. Well, we can go and talk to the dwarves, and you can listen outside to make sure that the deal goes well. And if it does, we'll we'll have you get all the meat and mead you want. Mm, okay. Okay. Lead the way, then, Dwali. He uh, leaves the room that. and then comes back and cuts you guys down. I will crawl out of my route. Okay. And then uh, leads you out. On the way out, um, he doesn't go in the direction that uh, Albrecht and Little Sparkle were. He goes into another chamber and he um, gets what at first appears to be Uh, Just a bunch of, like, uh, a bunch of leather and hide that seems to be kind of patched together. And he throws it over one shoulder, 
and it kind of makes a makeshift armor over his shoulder and chest. Um, and then he kind of reaches between two trees and pulls out, like, I don't know, like a sword that is like, I don't know, the, the, the size of a small building, essentially, and then pulls out <laughs> another identical one. Nice. Like two big, giant, long swords. And he straps them to his back. And he crawls back out, or he crawls out of uh, through the entrance and waits for you guys to come out. Yeah, we'll follow. Uh, yes. Okay. We come yeah. out. Yeah, he stands up. He's really big. But now that you're not so close to him, it's both more and less scary. Since Yay. you see just how big he is, but also you're not too close to him. Does he look familiar? Oh, yeah. You've seen this guy before. He's the one we freed, isn't he? Mm-hmm. Ah. Boy, I can't decide whether that's good to mention at all. <laughs> that doesn't seem like a terrible thing to let him know. Mm. I didn't realize that we ever actually saw him. Yeah, we saw his, yeah. like, head. And also, yeah. uh, whoever went into the forest and saw him before we got into the forest and saw the uh, the ring. I mean, it... It makes sense that this would be the same troll. Uh, and mm -hmm. Little Sparkle specifically has seen him. Oh, yeah. Oh, right, 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 right. Yeah, that one time I was hiding. Yeah. Oh, oh we know you. We freed mm -hmm. you from the, the, the prison you were in. Oh, yeah? Yeah. He uh, kind of uh, nudges uh, Sakar with his finger. It's not a pleasant experience. You free a troll? Stupid idea. I did. <laughs> Seems to be working out for us so far. Mm, almost didn't. <laughs> story of our lives, Dwali. Story of our lives. Really is. He uh, lumbers towards the city, surprisingly quietly. Well, maybe Can not we that surprising because you've you've seen him be incredibly quiet before, but. To uh, certainly to Dallin and Seven Owls, he like you know you should be feeling the rumble on the ground from him stepping around, but you don't. Hmm. Mm. That's weird. Must be. An Are we thing. able to keep up? Is he moving very fast or? No, he seems to deliberately be trying to not outpace you guys. Mm. Follow his lead. Okay. <laughs> well, you guys get back into the city. Um. There's a couple of times where like a log comes out of nowhere and hits him in the side and he's like, Oh, I forgot about that one and you know, kind of like <laughs> and, uh, God, so many so many traps have reset. No dwarves to show for it. It's because they're all either dead or in hiding. Mm, still think maybe can have one dwarf, but <laughs> just gotta think of Jacob. Me, gonna keep to the deal. No break. Hey, do we deal. see Jacob? Hmm. No, you don't do see Jacob. Okay. Oh no, I want to see this colossal goat. <laughs> you guys get back into the fort. He just kind of hops the the wall like it's a, uh, you know, like it's like the neighbor's fence. <laughs> mm -hmm. I assume we have to climb the trees. Yeah, you guys have to climb the trees. <laughs> Fun. Yeah. As you guys climb the trees, you hear some commotion from inside. What does it sound like? It sounds like uh, fighting. Like mm. uh, you also hear somebody being like, "The troll is out." Does it, does it sound like a dwarf or a ghost? Uh, I mean, it uh, probably sounds like a ghost voice. I guess <laughs> probably have like a spooky tinny quality to them. <laughs> There's some yep. flanging at the edges of it. Yep. Uh, but by the time you guys get up on the wall, it looks like uh, Dwali has it well in hand. It also doesn't look like he even drew his swords. He just kind of like stepped on them. Nice. And uh, Ghost in fact, he's like, when you guys get up to the top, he's like got one of his feet up, he's just standing on one foot, and he's like pulling a spear out of the, uh, out from like one of his toes. <laughs> hmm. Impressive. 
Mm, and it oh. looks quite painful. Oh, it heal. <clears throat> Did he leave any armor behind? <laughs> uh, you might be able to piece together a suit of armor from the bits that he left behind. Spivvy. Upgrade for the ghost ally. Well, he wants to take the stealth penalty, though. Mm. He is a ninja. It, it, it should conform to the nature of his ninjeriness. <laughs> there we go. His ninja nature. Yeah. Do we have an easy way to carry it? You your can backpack. Like, yeah, yeah, you can. We can split you can it each like put a piece in least. your backpack. I suppose. Let's see what we can find. Yep. Oh, great. Yeah. Let's inspect some buildings. Which building is it? Or which buildings, rather? Uh, you guys spend some time looking at the buildings and uh, find it pretty close to the center of town. And in fact, it's a building that is uh, exists both outside or on the ground level and down uh, in like the main vault of the city. All right. So, well, let's let's negotiate a deal. Yeah, I guess. Hey, it's for the good of everything. Okay. It is. You you do this, and you can be hailed as as one of the great negotiators. <laughs> Uh huh. You you might even bring about peace between your kind and his kind. The dwarf who brought peace with the trolls. Think of it. They'll probably erect a statue. I'd rather be known as the dwarf that brought the trolls to pieces. Yeah, maybe. Uh, either way, they're going to erect a statue. <laughs> we we poke around until we find this thing. But yeah, you find it. Found it. Oh, okay. I'm just saying, uh, okay. like we're, I think, giving Albrecht the pep talk before we uh, turn it on. Yep, let him fire up the amps and warm up all those, uh, you know, <laughs> subwoofers. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah. <laughs> well, it's dwarf technology. It's probably tube driven. So, is there any sort of like intensity control? Can I maybe try to see if we can find any local dwarves still around? It's a seven channel equalizer. <laughs> um, the, no, not really. It. These things pretty much broadcast uh, pretty far and wide. Essentially, you uh, compose a message with the controls, and then you just let it play, and it'll just play over and over and over again, kind of like you do with Morse code, just kind of send the same thing over and over, and then wait for a response. All right. <laughs> it sounds so, like music? Uh, no, it actually kind of sounds like nothing. It's a stone that's incredibly big hitting the ground with a lot of force, but not a lot of speed. So if you're in the same chamber as it, you can feel it like vibrate up your sternum. Um, but if you're outside, you can barely hear it. It's a frequency that literally no one can hear, but like dwarves can feel on the ground. Mm -hmm. Like an infrasonic. Yeah. yeah. But if you could hear it, it would go. Mm -ch, mm -ch, mm -ch, mm -ch. Kind of. I mean, it's like Morse code, but as deep as it goes. Which is why clubs are underground. Dwarven mm -hmm. communication hubs. Yeah. So what are you guys, uh, what message are you guys sending? Uh, hey, good news. <laughs> <laughs> good news. We, we found an ally in our fight. <laughs> All it's going to cost you is your lives. Uh, no, no, don't put that part in how there. About, how about... Uh, Dwarves are gone, made in negotiated truce with Troll, is willing to help with assault in exchange for meat, mead, and peace. Well, we sure to put giant Troll. Enormous troll. I'll, I'll Also put in, if this negotiation fails, we die. Oh, yes. yeah, please. Uh, yep. Also, so... Under remind them that he's a very big troll and is stepping on ghosts left and right. Good ally in this fight. <laughs> I'll try to convey that to the best of my diplomatic capabilities. Okay. Alright, so you dial it in? Yep. 
Okay. You let the message roll. Mm-hmm. And it's just kind of going to be a little while. Okay. You got to let it roll and then you got to turn it off and wait for a response. All right. It's sending. It's going to be a bit before we hear anything back. Hear that, Dwali? I heard. How long is a oh, bit? Did you did you put in there that he was a that it speaks of that he's a very nice troll, <laughs> something like that. All right, you guys uh, let the message roll for a while, turn it off, mm-hmm. wait a little while. Is there time to rest at all? Uh, yeah, I mean, there's time for a short rest, definitely. We don't really need a short rest, but I guess I used an encounter power during the skill challenge, so yeah, I'll take a short yeah. rest. Mm-hmm. Plus, that's how you get. I think you need a short rest to get action points back. It's true. Like, technically, you guys are your second milestone. Ooh, fancy. <laughs> oh, does that mean we get two action points? It does yeah. not. I mean, it does for maybe me. one of us, yeah. yeah. I mean, I have two action points because I've yet to spend one. Although, it's like kind of limited on how you can spend Yeah, I know. It. Yep, the drawbacks of gifts from the gods. Uh, a message starts coming in. Oh, oh boy. Getting a response. What What to say? Uh, they say that they're uh, willing to negotiate, and uh, we're going to meet in the Bleakstone Caverns. Do we know where that is? Mm-hmm. You can find it on the map. Okay. All right. All right. Well, guess we got to go here. All right. How far is it? It's a It's a trek. Would it be less of a track if, say, we were riding on the shoulder of uh, someone who had a giant stride? Or maybe riding on a to- on uh, the back of a giant Jacob. <laughs> Potentially. Uh, Dwali, we've got a meeting spot. Um, if you know a good way to get there, uh, we could head out. Yeah, me find good way to get there. Well, we're ready to go whenever you are. Hmm... Providing there's no skills challenges involved. <laughs> yeah. You all look very rough. Well, Thank because you. Because we got beat up a bunch. If there's, uh, We didn't want you to be any hungrier than necessary, but if you're not in a huge rush, it would be lovely if we could sleep. Yeah, you sleep. You sleep in here. Mm. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Well, where's here? The... Oh, the room that his we're building. in. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was going to say his belt, his belly. In his gullet. His rucksack. All right. Well, we will take a nap while the troll stands guard outside, I'm guessing. <laughs> a week's worth of nap, probably. I uh, Well, maybe. Uh, this actually might be two weeks worth of nap. Let me look here. Ooh. Uh, where's the... Oops, that's not the right file. That is not the right file as well. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, it might be two weeks before you guys hear from us again. Oh, it's oh. ah, so a long. Eh? That uh, that accursed Thanksgiving here in the United States. <laughs> oh. So while our troll goes hungry, we'll be <laughs> we will stuff our gullets. Uh, yeah. So uh, we'll be back in a couple of weeks. That's okay. No worries. Uh, this happens every year. And uh, in the meantime, it'll give you plenty of time to go back and listen to other episodes. It'll give you plenty of chances to go and listen to um, uh, other shows that we do in the Major Spoilers Podcast Network. Perhaps you'd like to watch us play some board games uh, over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Major Spoilers. Perhaps you'd like to go check us out playing live stream gaming over at our Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash Major Spoilers. Or perhaps you just want to reach out to us and say, hey... I really appreciate you. Thanks for doing what you do. If you want to do that, there's a number of ways you can contact us. One of them is on Twitter. The at D and D Brian. Matthew. At Mighty King Copa. Rodrigo. At Fearsome Critter. Samantha. At Samantha Nelson One. Rob. At Bore Immortal. And of course, I'm at Major Spoilers. So until next time, here's hoping all of your dice rolls are critical hits. This podcast is copyright 2019 by Major Spoilers Entertainment, LLC.